when it comes to things that I want to do, if you can tell me I have the chance to be the last at something, think about this. If you tell me I get the chance to be the last at something, I don't necessarily want to be the first. A lot of people say I want to be the first, but I can finish it. Like we all know as basketball players, it's not who starts, who finishes. Am I right? Like on the real, who is who finishes the game, that's what the coach trusts most. Like, okay, this is my closer. They can get it done. They close it, right? So to me, people say who start. I've always felt this way in my whole career. Even when I was younger, it's not about who start, but I want to be on that court the last four or five, six minutes. Because that means the coach thinks I'm here to win the game. That means the coach believes I, he trusts me in this situation to win the game. No matter the skill of his will, he trusts that I can get it done, right? So now, we talk about a school that's been open since 57. It's, it was open as a college in 1957, Cabrini, right? 2016, it transitioned into be a university. In 2023, it would close. These are facts. These are the numbers. 1957, the school was founded as a college. In 2016, it transitioned into a university. And 2023 is closing. So you mean to tell me I get to be the last at something before the chapter is closed? And I'm here and I'm trusted to be the last at something? To me, you talk about pressure, and listen, we talk about pressure a bunch of different ways, but for me, pressure is so important, so valuable, because people say it busts pipes, but it creates diamonds. I'm a diamond maker. I love being considered a diamond. Pressure's been in my life the whole time. That's what made me. That's what made me who I am. Cavatory, I couldn't run, I couldn't jump. But I know darn sure where I came from, and I didn't want to go back there. So that's why I enjoyed the pressure. That's why today I do little things to put pressure on myself. Now, I'm not you, but I want you to listen to this mindset. If you tell me I get to close the book, so when the last school is, is done, when I, could, I was a member of this team. This, I was a member of this team, so I was part of the last group here? Okay, bet. So how do I want to go out? So let's see. Going by the American East Conference, they picked us pretty much in this conference to finish fourth, maybe fifth, right? Huh. So you mean to tell me, Isaac and Jaden, the two seniors, they tick pick me fourth or fifth at a school that is closing. You talk about the disrespect. So let me get this straight. This is not a normal season. This is our last season. And this season, when you say, how do you predict us? You know, it comes out of everything. Every year, what are you predicting to come? So my last year to wear this uniform that nobody else will wear, the disrespect you have to pick me fourth or fifth as a school, as a team, to finish at a conference is fourth or fifth. <laughs> let me let me step fast. Let me rewind a little bit. I don't do this for free. I speak. I get paid for this. This is what I do. Yes, I'm a TV analyst. Yes, I do other things. But I get paid for this. So when Kev called me, I was like, oh, let's get on the books. When he said, well, you know the school closed. I said, what you mean? He said, this will be the last year of the school. I said, what you mean, last year of your basketball program? He said, no, no, the school is closing. The, the university, Cabrini, the one I, I've known my whole life, because I'm from North Philly, which, the school I've known my whole life is closing? He said, it's the last year. I said, oh, bro, I'll do this for free. This is what I'm talking about, pressure. You think you got pressure to have the student athletes on the court? Let's talk about Coach Ryan. He's running done. Let's give him, this is first year, and this is his last year. So talk about the pressure he has of closing the book. He, he's going down as the last coach. He's the seventh coach in school history. He's going down as the last coach to coach this team. And then you picked us fourth or fifth. So let me get it straight. We all know it's one thing we all have in common. We all going to die. We all going to die. It's just a fact. <laughs> we, we can't think of another way. I have to get more, but we all going to die, right? So... If you tell me that we all say we have to live life to the fullest because you never know when your time is coming, but we take it for granted because we're young, we're athletic. Y'all can run down this court, so y'all are in better shape than 99% of the population in the world. So we say, oh, we good. So we, we kind of take it for granted. We kind of don't really go like we should go every day. We don't kind of think mentally how we should take it everyday life when we wake up. We don't kind of do that. We, we, we say we do, but deep down we really don't. We say, oh, we'll get to it tomorrow. Or we say, you know, all right, I know I didn't quite finish that. Or I know I didn't quite finish going as hard as I can. I'll do it tomorrow. You know what? You know, 
I ain't call my, my friend. I ain't talked to him in a while. I'm really busy, though. I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, man, I had an argument with my teammate over an assignment, man, but I knew I was wrong, but, like, it wasn't that deep. So I talked to him tomorrow, right? You know, I got a test paper that's due, and tomorrow morning, my 8 young class, I got to take this test, right? So that I really get to it, but we got another one next week. So I'll study for that one tomorrow, right? <laughs> it's no tomorrow, fellas. It's no tomorrow. You are blessed to be the last to wear those uniforms. Your coach is blessed to be last, to be the last coach. He's the seventh coach. He'd be the last coach here. There's no tomorrow. Meaning for this university, Isaac and Jaden, it's no tomorrow for you, respectfully. Meaning next season. This is the last season. Talk about pressure. As athletes, a lot of times we know we're not going to be loved by everyone, especially by the opposing team. We know we're not going to be loved. We better be respected. We know when we get this W, we leave that gym, they booing us. They don't love us. But you better respect me. Respectfully, as men, a lot of times we can go without love, but you better respect me. So I'm going back to it again. For the 23-24 season, preseason, they got us pick four fifth. And I'm the last. And me being the last, they got me fourth or fifth. The disrespect, the blatant disrespect. You don't got to love me, but you better respect me. That's not showing respect. How do we get respect? We got to take it. Respectfully, we have to take it. It's not going to be handed to us. It's not going to be Mormon. It's not going to be ushered in. We have to take it. We have to go and play against the other elite schools who think who's picked four for first or second lead. And I'm stepping in like, oh, yeah, they got you picked ahead of us. By the way, your school will be here next year. Mine won't. But they got you picked in front of us, right? Cool. Okay. So let's see how this works out for you. You're not going to give us this W. We don't want this W. We're going to take it. Now, how do we take it? And let's let's say it starts and ends with that game. It starts from the day. It starts from the beginning of school year. You got that word this the last year. Okay, bet. So now how do I approach it? How should I approach this game like I should approach life? This is my last days. If you literally had a a calendar and somebody put on that calendar your expiration date of when your life will end, you will all live differently. That's just a fact. Not just you, me. I'm in my 40s. I will live life completely different. But I'm in the best shape of my life, so I think I will live them all. That's not always the case. 256,000 people do not wake up the next day. 256,000. But if you gave me a date and said, this is the date that I will expire, how would I live? I'll live totally different. I have three sons that I love to death. Love them to death. I'm on them. I'm on them. They make a mistake. You know what? All right, I'll get on more about that tomorrow. But if I had an expiration date and I know the exact date, and let's say that date was tomorrow, would I wait till tomorrow to get my point across? No. Would I, would I wait to show as much love as should be shown to others around me? No. Would I have a good best friends? I got a few best friends. One of them lives in Vegas. I don't talk to them every day, but when I do talk to them, it's like we talk every minute. They might. Tad. Right? Would I wait to talk to him tomorrow the next day? No. Mike has three, uh, two sons and a daughter. Would I wait to say, hey, this is Uncle Mark. How y'all doing today? How was school? I don't talk to them every day. Would I wait to do that tomorrow for the expiration? Heck no. Kev, high school teammate, high school friend. Would I wait a month before I talk to Kev? No. It wouldn't be enough time in the day that I didn't give myself to something or someone or make sure everyone in my presence know the love they felt for me. Not a day will go by. Not a second won't go by. Let's say if my expiration point was a year from now. That year don't make a difference today. Because I know once today leaves, I don't get it back. I don't get it. I don't never get it back. I don't never get it back. So how can I maximize the day? How can I maximize this opportunity? How can I maximize that boom? How we come in here? This is a brotherhood. You are the last. You're going down in the history books of Cabrini University as the last basketball team to wear them uniforms. So now the game is not about dribbling and shooting and scoring. The game is about the relationships you build together. 
the brotherhood you form together. What is bigger than being the last of something that should bring you the closest as anything you ever came close to? Nothing. The love you show to each other, the extra support you show to each other, the wrap around in the arms you show to each other, when things ain't going perfect, because nothing is perfect. Nothing at all is perfect. Life is not perfect. Nothing is going to flow like you want it to flow. But I'm a big believer in popcorn. I eat it. But I use it as a metaphor for life. If you do what you're supposed to do, and you do it with love in your heart, with an open mind, you're going to pop. Everybody pop, but not everybody pops the same time. So you might have 30 this game, he might have 10. Next week, he might have 30, you might have 10. We all going to pop, though, baby. We all not going to pop the same time, but God damn it, we going to pop. And the best part about that is when I'm not popping a day, I make sure I hype him. My boy, good game. He hot right now. Let me find him. Oh, he coming off his, he got a weak defend on him. Let's find him. I know it's, the, I can't really get this buck right now. I know I can if I really want to, but it's going to be easier for him because he got the weak link on him. Let me find him. I got my shooter hot right now. Let me go set this pick for him to come off. Let me get him hot going. How do we progress in life is how we give to life. How do we see our mindset with everything we do is how we give ourselves to others. Now maximize that to the end game. The end game. I'm the last. So goddamn it, watch how I go out. Watch how we go out. Four for fifth? <laughs> yeah, okay. Four for fifth. <laughs> the blatant disrespect. Man, I was chopping at the bit. Listen, people, I tell you, I'm going to repeat myself. You can Google me. I couldn't run and I couldn't jump. But I have a heart that's bigger than the size of the city of Philadelphia. And one thing that I learned at a young age is skill would get you so far, but that dog in you would take you where you want to go. That dog would take you further than your skill would ever do. Listen to me. The dog in you, the will in you, would take you so much further than the skill in you. Somebody may be real nice. I know a lot of players. I've played with and against a lot of great players that had all the skill in the world, a.k.a. eye candy. You see somebody looked apart in the drills. He played a part. But when you get the competitive basketball, he's not the part. He's not. Because once that dog get up in him, his true heart shines. His true heart is not that big. It's not. And then that dog takes over. So, yes, when you people from the sidelines see the workouts, man, this guy can shoot. Man, this guy nice with it. Oh, this guy move. Look, he got after. Look how he built. Look at him. Oh, he nice. When that one-on-one -on -one come, <laughs> shit, get real. Hey, get real. As you go through every day of practice, as you go through everyday life, remember it's not about you right now. You are part of something, but you're not all as you. It's not all about you. Repeat, you're a part of something, but it's not all about you. You have a foot in the door of a door that's about to be closed. And when my foot's in that door, I'm saying, hold on, bro, we're not done. We're not done. We're not done at all. So why I'm here while I'm able to wear this uniform, I'll be damned if you or anybody else going to disrespect me or any of my comrades. The level of hunger and fight that you have to be boiling over with right now should be greater than anything you've ever done in your life. Greater than anything you've ever done in your life. Because it's not just about you, it's about the guy next to you. That guy next to you needs you just as much as you need him. I don't care where you're from, what your economical background, what you got coming up next year, who gives a damn? It's about right now. It's about right now. And we can't go as far if I'm thinking about me. But right now, when I'm here, we're here. When we walk in, we walk together. We walk together. When we play in front of these other places that come with their fans, like, oh, they're about to close, yeah, we're going to blow them. Yeah, okay, blow these. 
and we're going to walk in there, we're going to take what we want, we're going to take respect. You don't have to, we don't want you to love you. We don't care if you love us, but you're going to respect us. I am the last of something. We are the last of something. And while we're here, these doors are not closed. But when we hear we close, we're going to close your doors with this W. Every day we in this gym, the grind is so real because I understand this is not a normal practice. I understand this is not a normal game. I understand that. So the mindset I take is not just here, it's here. I am chopping at the bit for you. I'm not you, but I am chopping at the bit for you. When I heard this the last year, boy, I was so freaking hyped. Really? Oh, y'all about to do big things. Start research. Oh, what they got you playing? How'd y'all finish last year? Okay, boy. This year they got you what? For one count, say four. One, say five. I didn't see one, six. I said, oh, oh, it's, oh, we, oh, oh, okay, it's like that. Oh, it's, oh, it's like that. Oh, they, they, they think it's sweet. They really think it's sweet right now. Okay, okay. I'm Coach Ryan. Like, I'm, I have a new definition of one and done. So the pressure on me to perform, I'm going in the history books. I'm the seventh coach here, Coach Ryan, and I'm the last. So on my watch, when the chapter is closed, what will be written about me? Can you imagine every single thing been written about you that you didn't agree to you didn't like? But if you knew you had a chance to control it, the person hands that's writing about you, if you can take over their body and their mind and write for them what they want to be said about you, Wikipedia, everybody got a Wikipedia page. Now anybody, from what I've told, anybody can comment and correct something on Wikipedia, which is crazy to me. So like, you mean to tell me I get to write my story and nobody else can control it? I'm not letting nobody else, no one else, write my story better than I'm writing. I will control my destiny. I will control my fate. Not the guys opposing on that other line. No one. No one but me. So as you go into your practice, as you go into your games, just remember this message. The disrespect is real. They didn't disrespect you. They disrespected him and everybody around you. And I'll be damned if I let them disrespect me and my brothers. I'll be damned if they don't show us respect. You don't have to love. We don't want you to love us. We want you to hate us. We want you to fear us because the chip is so large on my shoulder. Even if you tried to take it off, it's too heavy, it's too big, you can't take it off. So you want to get this chip along with the chip of everybody else on this jersey. And we're going to lay it all on the line for each other. We're going to lay it all on line for this university. We're going to lay it all on line for everyone that's ever stepped foot in this college, which is now university. Every, anyone that's ever went to this university, bless you, will remember this team. Because this team's going to do big things. Because I look at every last one of you, every last one of you is a man. Every last one of you has something to fight for. Not just the guys around you, but for you, and for the name on that college, that shirt, that university right there. Because I'm the last. And while I'm the last, I'm going to take every bit of respect there is to take in some. When I leave this gym, I've given it all. When we leave this court after game, we've given it all. When we leave the opposing team gym, they will stand up and they will applaud us. Why? Because we took your respect. Mark Jackson out. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you.